Now let's talk about setting up some tools for the moderators to use in their duties and being able to log those actions. So we're gonna go to moderation. And the first thing up here is the documentation. Channel to announce bans and kicks through the bot. So in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do that in the YAG PDB log channel. And we're gonna set up a few more. Then channel to send messages for the mods slash admins in reports and such. So for that one, we're gonna have that under incident reports and we're gonna get into that, what that actually is for. So this right here is what it's about for this. This is the report command. This is something that your staff could possibly use, or it could be something that if you so choose, your members could use. So if a member is having a problem with another user, like they're harassing them, typing all kinds of weird, weird things, uncomfortable things, or even if the individual is just spamming, what they can do with this is they can report that user. So they can at mention that user. And then at that point, the report will upload a log of the last 100 messages in the channel, in that channel that the command was posted and send a message about it in the report channel. So in this case, the incident reports. That gives you all a chance as staff to review the issue as it happened and have a record of it. So when you go to address that individual, you have evidence available to you. So that is something that I recommend at the very least the staff know about. And of course, there are other things that I usually recommend like log unban events if it happens. Enabling of the give roll at roll, I don't actually use that. I don't use the clean command, but I do use the log ban events that are not made through the bot. So any ban that happens and the bot sees it, it will log it. That's why it's best that under, under nominal circumstances that incident reports, YAG PDB log, that those channels be locked to view only. So that way, none of those messages can ever be deleted. If you do need, if you do need them to be available for your staff to add additional notes, just make sure that the messages cannot be managed. So with that, we're done on this, this particular tab. So now let's move on to the muting tab. So this is where you can set it up to where the bot is able upon command to mute a user and also keep track of the time that the user is to be muted. And for, for when that time expires, we'll reinstate their permissions to be able to interact in the server. So we start with enabling the mute. Then what is the mute role? That's where the suspension role comes in. So have the bot manage the mute role, it will automatically add overrides to all channels for the, for the role. In this particular case, because we have the suspension role at the very top above all the other roles, if that was the case, if you had other roles, have the suspension role at the very top, you don't need to worry about this. And then of course here where it has disallow adding reactions when muted, I highly recommend that. I have seen some cases to where Members, after they've been silenced, they use the reactions to make some very bad statements. So I highly recommend that when an individual is muted, the only channels they can access is to read only the rules and to be able to submit a ticket. Users with the following roles have permission to use the mute related commands. In this case, it would be your administrators, your moderators. You don't have to worry about YAG because YAG is the one doing this. <laughs> and then of course, remove the following roles from the user when they are muted and give them back when the, the mute ends. If you have whatever, uh, whatever roles that are beneath suspension, I suggest that you check all of those so that the bot knows exactly what they need to take away. Mute reason optional, I prefer to leave that disabled and then unmute reason op optional again. I prefer to leave that disabled. I want I want a reason for why it was done. And of course, the default mute duration in minutes set to zero for infinite. So you can set a time in particular. I usually do any a starting point of thirty minutes 
that usually gives time for the individual to engage in a cool down period. So that's, and we'll also show an example of that when, when we mute our test, our test account. So we'll save those settings and we'll move on to the kick commands. So in this case, we'll enable the kick command. And in this case, I've already, I've already done this on this one, but this again, just like on the mute set, which, which particular roles have the ability to use this. You can also set to delete the user's last 100 messages upon a kick. If you want to enable that, by all means, go for it. I would say for damage control, it's a good idea to do that because having it continue talk about an altercation that has been resolved, it just doesn't look good. For the ban, ban concept, it's the same thing as the kick and the mute. Just enable it and set it and move forward. For the warnings, now this is cool. So if you need to keep track of how many warnings you give individuals instead of having to type it in and all this kind of stuff, well, the bot can do that for you. So by enabling this and, of course, setting the permissions on who can use it, then also, and then you have one down here which says create message logs in the channel that the command was run in when the user was warned. I prefer not to do that. And then I'll send warnings to the mod log. I'm okay with that. Okay, so that is set up. And then, of course, you have some other stuff like uh, basic moderator. You have auto moderator. Uh, you have some other logging options. So this is something that I would recommend too. So blacklist channels from message logs. So in this case... There are certain channels that you might not want the bot to log, to log messages about. So this would be the section to do that. Like, I've, like in this case, I would say the entrance, we probably don't want them to do it. But then again, if, the, if you're seeing someone who's going back and forth and stuff, this may be something to consider. There is also, there's also the notion of, let's say the rules section, but ultimately in many cases, I would say, the YAG PDB log itself, probably not worth it. And any others that you see fit, you can go ahead and log that. Restrict message log access. So in this case, you, bas you basically only want to restrict it to a certain set of parties. In this, in this case, because if it says, if none are set, everyone will be able to access message logs, including users not logged in at all. Otherwise, access is restricted to only the specified roles. So with that, Obviously, you want at least your admins. Maybe, maybe not. But ultimately, that's what it comes down to. If you trust your moderators, then by all means, go for that too. So then you go ahead and save that. So now let's get into showing about the warning system. Just to start. Because it's pretty clear on kick and ban. But let's talk a little bit about warning and also muting right quick. So as a moderator slash administrator, if you go to the modbot commands and you see this legend right here, so you have the warnings and strikes, messages, user, and creates a log. So what happens is we're going to do a quick thing here. All right, so we're going to send a warning to our test account. So to do that, we're going to do this. And I, I pre-typed something earlier. So we're going to do that, and then we are going to send it. So now our test account has been warned. And as you can see, there's a login for that. And it has the reasoning down there as well. So if we flip over to our test account, you can see that the test account has received a DM from the Yagbot. And as you can see here, there's, there's been some previous tests and other things. But down here, it says, of course, in tutorial. So that's the name of the server. You have been warned, reason you're being warned for spamming in the general chat. Please refrain from doing this and follow the rule and follow all rules. Thank you for your cooperation. So that's the warning. So what if we act and then what if we wanted to check how many warnings the individual has had? Let's just do an let's just do another one just for good measure so we can so we can we can show some things also. Okay, so they've been warned again. Now, as we can see up here where it says warnings list, 
So it retrieves a list of warning for a user. So what we can do is we can actually put in the command. And I'm going to have to spell this out. Got to get rid of all the rest there. And, and it shows you right here how many the 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 total list of warnings and what they were it brings up all of the details on what was sent so this is a pretty powerful thing to do plus you have you have page flipping in case there's there's more of them okay so that's the warning factor now of course we can look at something called muting so in this case what we can do is by using this we can mute someone for a specific amount of time so if you have to mute someone and warn them, then of course that's a sequence of commands. But in this particular case, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna mute the user. That's the same as before. And the thing is what we need to do is we need to put in the mute command itself, who it is in field three, the number of minutes, and then in field four, what the reason is. So right now we have the mute in field one, who it is we're muting in, in the second field, and then one number in particular in field three, and then of course our message in field four. So now if we go back to our particular user, they have been muted. And for this case, it's for one minute for this example. If we go back to the server, you can see that, and we'll fix this because as you can see here, they still have access to one of the voice channels because we didn't set the rules for it. So if we edit the category and we edit the permissions and we bring in the suspension, and then we, of course, we lock everything out. In this case, this is the category, so it's going to give all options here. If we head back, now it's gone. So the only thing they can see are the rules, get a ticket, and of course, ticket instructions. Once the time expires, of course, the, as the bot stated in the instructions, it brings everything back, as you saw there. And then, of course, it says, you have been unmuted, reason, mute duration expired. So you can see now you don't have to manually keep track of muting someone. The bot can do that for you. So with that, that's just a little tutorial of setting up both the ticketing system and showing you through the bot logs here how things can remain in a organized manner and lessen the amount of DMs that you have to do. Now, if you so choose to continue DMs for certain circumstances, depending on how sensitive they are, that is your discretion. But with this, I'd say this could be very useful especially if you're receiving multiple inquiries and you want your team to come together to try to figure out which ticket that your staff would want to work on. So I want to thank everyone for watching this video. I hope this tutorial was helpful to you. If you like what you saw this time around, maybe consider leaving a like. And if you'd like to see more, maybe consider subscribing. Let me know in the comments what else you would like for me to do as far as Discord tutorials, and I'll see what I can do in the futures with that. So until next time, happy mixing, everyone.